Let's go live to one of the areas affected. I'm joined by the Shadow Industry Minister, Ed Husick. Ed Husick, thanks very much for your time. First of all, in your area in Western Sydney, give us a sense of what the mood is like as your constituents face even tighter restrictions over the next four weeks. I think people, Kieran, in my part of Western Sydney have obviously been on a bit of a journey going from having the initial lockdown announced in late June, then an extension of that, then tougher rules for South West Sydney, then have my part of Western Sydney brought into that. Now additional council areas have been brought in and overall looking at a two-month lockdown and people uh, obviously having to sort through the change in the rules, whether or not the financial support works for them, how long this will last for, and also wanting to get vaccinated and can't uh, necessarily get that readily. Now that there is going to have a number of the walk-in clinics in your area and surrounding LGAs, do you think there will be a significant take-up of that now that it is more readily available? Well, in my part of Western Sydney, I've been proud of the fact that two things have happened. One is that wherever there is a testing site, you'll see that there are queues there and people are doing the right thing to go and get tested. So, one, that's fantastic. Two, in terms of vaccination, I know either through GPs or by visiting the um, major vaccination hub uh, that's in my area, uh, that is, uh, has got lines where people are just queuing up and has been booked out till September. So, people are doing the right thing. The thing that's holding them up, Kieran, is the fact that the national rollout, vaccine rollout program uh, has been a blunder. Uh, we don't have enough supply. We don't have any being manufactured here. And we've had to play catch up uh, to make sure that uh, people can get some sort of vaccine or be encouraged to go get vaccinated. Do your constituents feel targeted in all of this? I think the concern was early on that there was a different level of treatment uh, with what was happening in some parts of the Sydney of Sydney relative to ours, and I definitely spoke up uh, on that at the time. And certainly, some of the suggestions that were coming out of the federal government that they'd roll in the ADF into parts of our uh, area in Western Sydney. But really, you know, what we need is we need more vaccines, and we need better financial support, and we don't need a a heavy police or military response in what is really a health crisis. And uh, again, I come back to the point in that the federal government uh, has done two things here badly. One, obviously, the vaccine uh, issue and not getting their rollout program working. Two, this obsession that we've had out of the federal government and elements of the New South Wales government to avoid lockdown at all costs. And what we've seen as a result of that, slow to lockdown, then forced to extend, uh, and then, now we have a lengthy lockdown in place and ordinary people are being forced to pay the price for that obsession. Uh, and we had a federal government point to New South Wales saying they were the gold standard uh, in terms of pandemic management. And I don't think anyone today, where we're looking at two months of lockdown and seeing states like Victoria and South Australia come out of short lockdowns, would think that that's the gold standard at all. Federal Labor has said the government needs to reinstate JobKeeper. Today, the mm. Prime Minister confirming that the payments, the disaster payments, will be at the level that JobKeeper was at its highest last year. Do you welcome that? I guess a number, I'll point out a number of things. First, they kicked out JobKeeper as a support from underneath the economy early. Uh, they did it at a time where their vaccine rollout program was not going to work and we're well behind most developed countries. In fact, we probably last uh, in respect of vaccination. And then when we have outbreaks like this and we're forced into lockdown, they're pushed to actually provide any form of financial support. They were pressured into the first round, which was uh, not at a level that would basically help a lot of people make ends meet. And they've been forced into this announcement today uh, so I think most reasonable people bearing that in mind, Kieran, would have trouble uh, congratulating a very clumsy and slow-moving federal government uh, in doing what they did today. We'll consult with businesses about the adequacy and we'll also uh, go through the detail of this to determine whether or not the adequate link is there between uh, employers and their employees. That is, you know, unlike JobKeeper that made sure that that link was maintained, that's not necessarily the case here. 
and people will want to know after all this if they've not been able to work, can they go back to work, will they be employed? That's got to be followed up as well. The federal government is increasing the maximum payment as cash flow boosts to, to business to uh, $100,000 per week and businesses up to $250 million turnover. But still, for small, medium-sized businesses, it will be based on 40% of their payroll. Is that enough? Well, I'm going to take the opportunity to talk with businesses in my area, as I have over the last few weeks, and they've been concerned about where the economy might head and the level of spending that will support their businesses out in our community. Uh, some, I know, talking directly with them, uh, have found that the rules around getting assistance uh, have been tricky to navigate and been slowly sorting through uh, that. And I, I have to say, I, I understand too that given the uh, way in which the lockdown has evolved and the way that the packages have been announced, you know, there sometimes will be teething problems. But I would make the point, if you're going to withdraw JobKeeper out of the economy and the financial supports out of the economy at a federal and state level, uh, you would need to also think if there are reoccurrences, and we know that the Delta variant was starting to take hold in different parts of the world and it was highly likely it might affect us here, you, know, you would hope that there is a plan B that's effective, easy to implement and easy, importantly, to understand. And that certainly hasn't necessarily been the case in the last few weeks. Let's hope it gets better. Finally, on the Year 12 students, resuming face-to-face -face learning, I don't think anyone begrudges them that, mm. but to try and level the playing field with those outside of the Western Sydney local government areas, Gladys Berejiklian saying that those kids going back to school will be vaccinated, They'll be, that will be expedited, the vaccination for those in Year 12 in Western Sydney local government areas. Do you, do you think that that is a good measure from the New South Wales government? I had parents already contacting me worried about their children going through Year 12 and not being vaccinated and whether or not the program could uh, uh, include in them and make sure that we fast forward the vaccinations for Year 12 students. So I think there will be a lot of parents, Kieran, that will be happy to hear that, particularly in Western Sydney. Uh, but again, we shouldn't have to be in a position where we're forcing... We're forced to choose between the regions and suburban areas because the vaccine rollout at the federal level was well and truly botched by the Morrison government. We shouldn't have to get to that. And so I could well understand and appreciate the regions being concerned about not having vaccine supply. People will work together. They, by our very nature as Australians, we will all chip in to make sure uh, that we can get through tough times. But again, you, I really think what we need out of the federal government is a serious fair income plan on vaccine rollout that didn't require us to make such choices. Shadow Industry Minister and member for Chifley in Western Sydney, Ed Husick, thanks. Thanks, Kieran.